Euro cylinder locks, by far the most common lock that you're going to find today in 2024 on an external door like this one. And today in this little video I'm going to show you how we remove one of these, measure up for a new one and replace it with a shiny new one. But hint, it's not going to be a basic one like this because these things are actually very insecure. And once we've replaced this with a new one, we're going to go on to looking at why somebody who shouldn't be getting into your home might be able to if you don't replace this with something a little bit more secure. So there's a few reasons why you might want to replace a Euro cylinder like this one. Those include a faulty lock, sometimes these can just go bad and you need to replace them, or maybe you've moved into a new property. Every time I move into a new property, I replace the locks on all the external doors because you never know who's got a key. So the Euro cylinder lock is held in place within the door in this position. And you'll find that it's held in place with this little screw just here. And you can see the screw hole on the lock just there. Now that screw stops the lock from moving around within the door, it just holds it in place so that it doesn't fall out. Now you're likely to have other screws along the edge of the door as well. The screw that we're looking for is the one that's in line with the bottom of the lock. Now to remove that screw, quite simply, we're just going to use a Phillips screwdriver. Now have the door open for this and put nice steady pressure onto the screw because we don't want to end up rounding the head of the screw off. These shouldn't usually be too tight, nice steady pressure turn the screw and you'll see that that screw starts to undo. Turn the screwdriver anti-clockwise to undo the screw. Lefty loosey, righty tighty and it'll come out nice and easy. So the screw's out and you'll notice that the lock now has play in it but it doesn't quite come out yet. Now that's a safety feature so that the lock can't just be pulled out. So we'll need the key for this lock now. Put the key in the lock. It doesn't matter if you do this from the front or back. And now what we're gonna do is just turn that key very slightly and at some point you'll feel the lock will just pop out. And there you go. You've got the old cylinder lock out of the door and in your hand. So now we've got the lock out, what we need to do is measure up for the new one. But if we actually take a look at this lock, the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it's not symmetrical. In this particular case, you've got a bigger measurement here than you have here and this is the external side and this is the internal side but there are lots of different combinations so when you're measuring up for one of these it's really important that we get it accurate so that we know exactly what size lock we need to order. There's two ways of measuring these, I'll show you both. The first method is to lay the lock on a flat surface, grab a rule Measuring the external side first, you can hold the rule on the edge of the lock to the centre of the screw hole and you can see that it's 55mm and then we'll do the internal measurement as well which is 45mm from the end of the lock to the middle of the screw hole. So those two measurements make this 100mm cylinder with a split of 55 external and 45 internal. The other way we can measure this is on the door itself using a square. Hold your square flush on the outside of the handle where you'll normally see the lock and measure to the center of the screw hole and you can see in this case that measurement's 55 millimeters. Now you'll need to repeat that for the inside measurement as well. Now it's important to note that on the external side of the door you don't want any protrusion of the lock because that will enable lock snapping, more on that shortly. So make sure your measurement is nice and flush with the handle. On the inside it's not as important, in fact the old lock that we just took out did have a little bit of protrusion on the inside. On the inside it's not really a problem. So we know the measurements and we have a new lock. This is the new lock that I've got, nice new shiny one but there's actually a lot more to this lock than there looks. More to come on this once we fitted it because this is actually really important. What we're going to do now is fit this into the door. Now to do that you can see that the lock has external marked on it but we already know from our measurements that our longer section is on the external side. Make sure that that little lug there is parallel with the cylinder and then you'll be able to slide that lock into the handle and feed it through the door. Give it a little wiggle and it should pop in nice and easy. If you look in that little screw hole there, you'll actually see the screw hole in the cylinder. But the best way to tell when the lock is in position is you can actually 
work the mechanism and the lock is actually functioning. You know it's then in position and it can be screwed in place. So grab the screw, normally you'll actually get a bunch of replacements, different lengths, but the one that you took out is usually the correct one. Place that back in the hull and then we're just going to do up the screw, not too tight, just need to nip it up really and that will be plenty sufficient to hold the lock in place. So the lock's held in place, now try the lock, check it all works properly. There we go, lovely and smooth, that's locked, check it unlocks. There you go, perfect. But don't go anywhere because there's more to this video yet and there's something that all homeowners need to know about these locks and their security. But before I touch on that, if you're not a subscriber yet, make sure you subscribe because there's loads of stuff coming like this and you don't want to miss it. And if the video's helping you out and you like it, then hit the like button for me because that helps it reach more people on YouTube. Also, check out the DIY Club. There's a link down below in the description. Now there's a huge flaw with the majority of your everyday Euro cylinder lock. So much so that police across the UK have recently been issuing notices to the public to try and create an awareness around what is called lock snapping. Now, let's head to the workshop where I'm gonna show you exactly how weak these are and why you might want to proactively replace these in your home with something a little bit better like I just did. So we've come out to the workshop and what I'm gonna do is show you just how easy one of these cheap Euro cylinders is to defeat for somebody who wants to get into your home. And I'm not teaching any would-be criminals anything new by showing you this because the likelihood is people who want to do this already know about it anyway. But what this does do is give you guys a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of awareness around a potential way that somebody you don't want getting in your home could potentially get in your home if you don't buy the right cylinder lock. So I'd recommend that you buy a three-star kite marked lock. Now the lock that we fitted earlier is exactly that and that's signified on the front of the lock you can see the three stars and that alone is a deterrent for any would-be criminals if they come and take a sneak peek at your lock before they attempt to get into it. If we look at this one there's no markings on it whatsoever and Mr. Burglar is going to know that this is an easy target. And now I'll show you why it's an easy target. You're going to be shocked at this. So I'm going to put this cylinder in the vise and I'm going to hold it in place in a position that would be the same as if it was screwed into your door. And then I'm going to use these inexpensive mill grips or locking pliers and I'm going to put a little bit of force on here and we're going to see exactly how much force we need to snap the cylinder in half and gain access to the mechanism. It doesn't take much force at all to already be able to cause the material to flex and move away from the mechanism. You can see the amount of force needed to cause that to flex. I'm putting hardly any weight on that at all. And now I'll give this a short sharp push and there goes your cylinder. And you can see how easy that lock was to snap hardly any pressure required at all and now the person who you don't want to get into your home has access to the mechanism and can open the door so it does show that it's important to select a high quality lock when you're purchasing a new euro cylinder and don't just go for the cheapest thing from your high street retailer personally i'll always go with either yale three stars or ultions so there are a couple i'd recommend i went and replaced a friend's lock when it failed a couple of weeks back and i I put a thumb turn on his because sometimes it's worth having a thumb turn if you're concerned about fire risk and getting out of the property quickly without a key but what I would say is if you've got anything like a glass panel in your door next to the cylinder probably best to avoid a thumb turn because someone can just smash the glass reach around and turn the thumb turn so you have options but definitely stay away from cheap locks. So I feel a lot better about having this lock in my front door. Now I know what you're thinking, if a determined criminal really wants to get access to your home, they're probably still gonna do it despite the lock. But this is all about creating a deterrent, much like CCTVs or alarm systems flashing on the front of houses. It's all about deterring someone from attempting to get into your home. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, check out one of these ones because there's loads more to learn and I'll see you guys in the next one.